Hello everybody, Slambo here. I wanted to try to walk through uh, how to balance your own Steadicam. Uh, a Steadicam such as this, a Merlin style Steadicam. Um, so that's the only thing I can speak of because that's the only thing I built. So, so uh, uh, I did a lot of investigating uh, and reading about it and it was difficult to find information on what did what, what did this weight control, what did that, you know, how did this adjustment and that adjustment, what did, you know, if it did this, what could I adjustment, could I do to make it do that. So now that I've built mine and I've played with it and did a lot of reading and, and I think I found a, a way that I can break it down to hopefully I can make it easy for anybody else that have made their own to where, uh, what, what they need to look for and uh, something that will make it easier for them to how to balance at least something where to start. The with a steady cam such as this, what it needs to do to operate properly is to uh, naturally remain steady when you stop moving or while you're moving for it to just not to pendulum or swing around. Um, and the uh, a good final test is to make sure that it's not going to do that is something that's called a one second drop test, and that is done like this. You get your camera all set up, mounted up there, and turn your spar. 90 degrees out and then let it go. If it takes one good full second to swing around past the 180 mark, then that's a pretty good well balanced system. So again, that's what you want to do. That's the one second drop test. Hold it out 90 degrees, let it go about one good full second to swing slowly around past this mark here. That's a good well balanced system. That's what you want to look for. So how do you go about achieving that? Oh, I'm no physics whiz, and I don't claim to be, but uh, hopefully I can make it, like I said, easier for some other people. But what you need to think of with your stabilizer system is an imaginary line running all the way through here, the entire way. Everything on this side of that line has to balance with this side of the line. And so that means this lower spar as well. Just because the spar is connected up here doesn't mean that that everything here is adding weight to this side of the seesaw. So uh, just in case those didn't know, think of your system as this is your center line and everything on this side reacting with everything on this side. So you want your system to be slightly bottom heavy and what adjustments are going to do that. I've made it to where I can add, add a tail weight, add a nose weight. I also can add, add adjust my arc length here. That I think is a pretty important feature to have. I can adjust the camera placement forward and back or left to right behind the seesaw point. So those are the main areas of adjustment. The gross adjustment is going to come from tail weight and arc length mostly. Nose weight. I want to touch on that and just then we're going to leave that one alone. Nose weight controls pan inertia. Inertia, the uh, tendency of a body at rest to remain at rest or in motion to remain in motion. So uh, that just means that if you have your camera in a line and you're walking, it's going to help it hold that line. And no matter how you twist your wrist uh, or move your body around, it's that is going to help you hold that line. And also when you pan it, that it adds a little bit of weight or substance there to help control it's not too light where it's just flings sorry if I bumped the camera um, or too heavy to where it, once you're moving it and you want to stop it it becomes too heavy to control and you also have to think that the more weight you add up here the more bottom heavy this thing is going to become so you don't want to get crazy with this add a good amount of weight up there a weight to think about is um, I use Merlin weights just for examples, those units which are right around 60 grams, so shoot for something around that up here. That's about five of these fender washers. And put it in your nose and then just leave it alone. Use other areas of adjustment to, to then tweak your camera. You can always come back to it if you have to, but you don't want to just keep adding weight to your, to your system to make it too bottom heavy. Add enough weight up there and then leave it alone. Uh, I don't really have any weight up here just because this system I have, this boom mic stand, this joint is a beefy uh, joint as it is, so it's a lot of weight by itself. The tail weight. Tail weight's going to adjust bottom heaviness. Arc length is also going to adjust bottom heaviness.
if I make my arc length smaller, it's going to make it less bottom heavy. It's going to start adding more material on this side of the seesaw point. If I swing my arc out wider and I make a larger arc, it's going to start at taking more of this material here and swinging it to this side of the seesaw point and bringing my nose down. So again, think of this line running the entire way through. So arc length, smaller, less bottom heavy, wider, more bottom heavy. I found that once I mount my camera and I just put some weight on there, like I said, I got some nose weight there and I've left it alone. I put some weight on there and I see what it does. Okay, so hopefully everybody understands um, what the uh, different features do. Let's try to walk through just getting your camera set up. You put it up there and as far as adjustments are concerned. Um, I don't worry about my left to right balance too much in the beginning because I think you can, uh, unless it's really, really bad, then you, you got to figure something else out. But just always know that when you're t balancing your system to naturally have your battery in the camera that you're going to use mostly if you have a couple different weights or whatever and have the LCD screen swung out. So put your camera, uh, match your camera up there um, and if it grossly swings down to the nose then you've got to either shorten the arc length or add more weight to the tail. If by adding more weight to the tail you exceed a one second drop that you know say you add weight to the tail and you know you get it somewhat level and you try your one second drop test that now it swings way too fast you you got to take that weight back off of there and then maybe you're going to have to simulate some weight up in the camera area either by or either move the camera farther away from the the center line or or add some weight around the camera area to simulate more weight up there um, but you do not want to exceed the, the slightly bottom heaviness of getting that one second drop. Basically, once you get that one second drop, you know, and if you're, by the way, if you're grossly down like this, then you can either open up the arc length to get it more bottom heavy or bring the camera much closer um, or take some weight off the, uh, or take some weight off the tail. If it's a gross adjustment, I suggest not doing the camera placement at all. I suggest doing weight or arc adjustments. As far as your arc length, you don't want to just keep shortening your arc length to make it less bottom heavy, to then you got it too difficult to have your arm in there to be able to maneuver the system to where your, your forearm would be bumping the tail. Once you get a slightly bottom heavy system where you're getting your one second drop, you want to leave pretty much adding weights alone as much as you can. Um, try to use camera placement or little weights around the camera to get yourself to zero bubble. You just don't want to exceed that one second drop. Fine tune it around the camera area as much as you can. So hopefully that's helped you out on this. I uh, wish you the best of luck. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, hopefully I've covered everything clear enough. Um, these are some of the key things I found out that uh, I think that I thought would help some other people out. So, all right, good luck.